Welcome to one of the additional Bible studies for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. And we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this is the Tanakh that we're reading from, and we will be reading from the book of Numbers, chapter chapters 20 to 27 this week. Before we begin that, we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. Father God, we just want to thank you for the ability to come together to study your word in all its forms. We love your word, Father God, and we know that your word is holy, it's faithful, it's true, just as you are holy, faithful, and true. And we just love you, Father God, and we ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, direct us. Show us what it is that we need to grasp from this week's reading and to integrate it within our spirit and our walk with you, Lord. We give you all our praise and all honor and glory belong to you. And we pray this prayer in the name above all names, the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Okay, as always with the additional Bible studies, we're not going to do a major recap, but I, if there's something that um, needs to be brought up, I will do it as we go along. So um, we're going to start right out with Numbers chapter chapter 20. Uh, the Israelites arrived in a body at the wilderness of Zin on the first new moon, and the people stayed at Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there. The community was without the so so this we know is Moses and Aaron's sister. So there's a lot of tragedy in chapter tragedy and loss in uh, chapter twenty. The community was without water, and they joined against Moses and Aaron. The people quarreled with Moses, saying, "If only we had perished when our brothers perished at the instance of the Lord." So they're back to complaining again, the mumbling and grumbling. Why have you brought the Lord's congregation into this wilderness for us in our in our beasts to die there? Why did you make us leave Egypt to bring us to this wretched place, a place with no grain or figs or vines or pomegranates? There is not even water to drink. Well, Moses and Aaron came away from the congregation to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces. The presence of the Lord appeared to them, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You and your brother Aaron, take the rod and assemble the community, and before their very eyes order the rock to yield its water. Thus you shall, shall produce water for them from the rock and provide drink for the congregation and their beasts. Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he had commanded him. Moses and Aaron assembled the congregation in front of the rock, and he said to them, Listen, you rebels, shall we get water for you out of this rock? And Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. Out came copious water, and the community and their beasts drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust me enough to affirm my sanctity in the sight of the Israelite people, therefore you shall not lead this congregation into the land that I have given them. Those are the waters of Meribah, meaning that the Israelites quarreled with the Lord through which he affirmed his sanctity. Now, he wanted uh, Moses to just talk to the rock, not to, not to strike the rock in order to show the people, you know, his, his glory. And so he did not listen correctly to the Lord. And so neither Aaron or Moses were going to go into the promised land at this point. Now now just think both of them lost their sister and then 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 the community is coming up against them. Uh then you know you, Moses had to be frustrated with the people at points because they really gave him a hard time. Um but he still did not follow what the Lord had commanded him to do. So he was not going to go into the promised land. There would be a successor, which we will see very soon. From Kadesh, Moses sent messengers to the king of Edom. 
Thus says your brother Israel, you know all the hardships that have befallen us, that our ancestors went down to Egypt, that we dwelt in Egypt a long time, and that the Egyptians dealt harshly with us and our ancestors. We cried to the Lord, and he heard our plea, and he sent a messenger who freed us from Egypt. Now we are in Kadesh, the town on the border of your territory. Allow us then to cross your country. We will not pass through fields or vineyards, and we will not drink water from wells. We will follow the king's highway, turning off neither to the right or to the left until we have crossed your territory. But Edom answered him, You shall not pass through us, else we will go out against you with a sword. We will, we will keep to the beaten track, the Israelites said to them, and if we or our cattle drink your water, we will pay for it. We ask only for passage on foot. It is but a small matter, but they replied, You shall not pass through. And Edom went out against them in heavy force, strongly armed. So Edom would not let Israel cross their territory, and Israel turned away from them. Setting out from Kadesh, the Israelites arrived in a body at Mount Hor. At Mount Hor, on the boundary of the land of Edom, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Let Aaron be gathered to his kin. He is not to enter the land that I have assigned to the Israelite people because you disobeyed my command about the, about the waters of Meribah. Take Aaron and his son Eleazar and bring them up on Mount Hor. Strip Aaron of his vestments and put them on his son Eleazar. There Aaron shall be gathered unto the dead. Moses did as the Lord had commanded. They ascended Mount Hor in the sight of the whole community. Moses stripped Aaron of his vestments and put them on his son Eleazar, and Aaron died there on the summit of the mountain. When Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain, the whole community knew that Aaron had breathed his last. All the house of Israel bewailed Aaron thirty days. Which means they didn't move from where they were at for thirty days also. So just in that chapter, so much happened. Um, Miriam and Aaron died. Um, Moses did, Moses and Aaron did not follow God's commands and they were told they could not enter the promised land and now there's Moses left with the people. Now Eleazar is now the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. Chapter 21, when the king, Canaanite king of Arad who, who dwelt in the Negev learned that Israel was coming by the way of Atherim, he engaged Israel in battle and took some of them captive. And Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, If you deliver this people into our hand, we will just, we will prescribe their, their, their towns. This is a strange writing here. Um, the Lord heeded Israel's plea and delivered up the Canaanites, and they and their cities were proscribed so that they, the name was Horma. They set out from Mount Hor by the way the Sea of Reed, which, which would be the Red Sea, to skirt the land of Edom. But the people grew restive on the journey, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. So here they are grumbling again. If we count how many times, the, how, how many times there was mumblings and grumblings through their 40 years of journey, journeying, it would be amazing. I mean, it, it, it's like almost every, you know, every other chapter, they're mumbling and grumbling about something. It, it had to make it really, really hard for Moses. Why did you make us leave Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no bread, no water, and we have come to loathe this miserable food. So the Lord sent a seraph serpent against the people. They bit the people, and many of the Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Intercede with the Lord to take away the serpents from us. And Moses interceded for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph figure and mount it on a standard. And if anyone who is bitten looks at it, he shall recover. Moses made a copper serpent and mounted it on a standard. So when anyone was bitten by a serpent, he would look at the copper serpent and recover. 
Now, this is a foreshadow. And the foreshadow is, is at this point, Moses was erecting a serpent on a pole and, and, and this was to save people from death. Now, the parallel here is Yeshua. And Yeshua said in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. So, and we know that that meant on the on on the tree. he was hung on the tree, um, and died for our sins to save us. So that was a foreshadow. That's what we call a foreshadow. And he referred Yeshua referred back to that. So the Israelites marched on and encamped at Obath. They set out from Obath and encamped at Ayer Abarim in the wilderness, bordering on Moab to the east. From there they set out and encamped at the Wadi Zered. From there they set out and encamped beyond the Arnon that is in the wilderness that extends from the territory of the Amorites. And I want to back up a little bit when we were talking about the word proscribe. It's kind of an, an odd word to use, but um, in this context, it is used uh, to utterly, basically utterly destroy, reserving no booty except what is deposited in the sanctuary. Um, and it's connected with um, the word, uh, well, connected with Kiharam to proscribe. Now, when we look at the literal definition of it, the only thing that, you know, it's to denounce or condemn, um, which doesn't quite quite fit. Um, but um, strikes remain proscribed in the armed forces. So that that it's probably the closest that we can come uh, to to that word that is used so because it has nothing to do with law to forbid especially by law that's another meaning so basically i would say that the closest it comes to is that, like the military strikes to condemn that people um because they totally obliterated so i just wanted to to kind of go back on that and clarify that word Okay, from the Wadi Zered, from there they set out and then camped beyond the Arnon, that is in the wilderness, that extends from the territory of the Amorites. For the Arnon is the boundary of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Therefore, the book of the wars of the Lord speaks of Waheb in Sufa and the, Wad, and the Wadis and the Arnon with its tributary Wadis stretch along the settled country of Ar, and that's Ar hugging the territory of Moab and from them to and from there to Beer, which is the well where the Lord said to Moses, Assemble the people that I may give them water. Then Israel sang this song. Spring up, O well, sing to it, the well which the chieftains dug, which the nobles of the people started with maces with their own staffs. And from Midbar to Matana, and from Matana to Nahalil, and from Nahalil to Bamoth, and from Bamoth to the valley that is in the country of Moab, at the peak of Pisgah, overlooking the wasteland. Israel now sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through your country. We will not turn off into fields or vineyards, and we will not drink water from wells. We will follow the king's highway until we have crossed your territory. But Sihon would not let Israel pass through his territory. Sihon gathered all his people and went out against Israel in the wilderness. He came to Jahaz and engaged Israel in battle. But Israel put them to the sword and took possession of their land from the Arnon to the Jabba as far as as of the Amorites, for as marked the boundary of the Ammonites, Israel took all those towns, and Israel settled in all the towns of the Amorites in Heshbon and all its dependencies. 
Now Heshbon was the city of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who had fought against a former king of Moab and taken all his land from him as far as the Arnon. Therefore the, the bards would recite, come to Heshbon, firmly built and well founded in is Sihon city. For fire went forth from Heshbon, flame from Sihon city, consuming Ar of Moab, the Lord, the lords of Bemoth by the Arnon. Woe to you, O Moab, you are undone, O people of Chemosh. His sons are rendered fugitive and his daughters captive by an Amorite king, Sihon, yet we have cast them down utterly. Heshbon, along with Debon, we have wrought desolation at Nopha, which is hard by Mediba. So Israel occupied the land of the Amorites. Then Moses sent to spy out Jazer, and they captured its dependencies and dispossessed the Amorites who were there. Chapter 22. They marched on and, and went up the road to Bashan, and King Og of Bashan, with all his people, came out to Edre to engage them in battle. But the Lord said to Moses, Do not fear him, for I give him and all his people and his land into your hand. We shall do to him as you did to, to Sihon, king of the Amorites who dwelt in Heshbon. They defeated him and his sons and all his people until no remnant was left him, and they took possession of his country. The Israelites then marched out on and encamped in the, in the steppes of Moab across the Jordan from Jericho. Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Moab was alarmed because that people was so numerous. Moab dreaded the Israelites, and Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this ford will lick clean all that is about us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. Balak, son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to Balaam, son of Beor, in, in Pether, which is by the Euphrates in the land of the, his kinfolk, to invite him, saying, There is a people that came out of Egypt that hides the earth from view, and it is settled next to me. Come then put a curse upon this people for me, since they are too numerous for me. Perhaps I can thus defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed indeed, and he whom you curse is cursed. The elders of Moab and the elders of Midian burst in division, set out. They came to Balaam and gave him Balak's message. He said to them, Spend the night here, and I shall reply to you as the Lord may instruct me. So the Moabite dignitary stayed with Balaam. God came to Balaam and said, What do these people want of you? Balaam said to God, Balak son of Zippor, king of Moab, sent me to this, sent me this message. Here is a people that came out from Egypt and hides the earth from view. Come now and curse them for me. Perhaps I can engage them in battle and drive them off. But God said to Balaam, Do not go with them. You must not curse that people, for they are blessed. Balaam arose in the morning and said to Balak's dignitaries, Go back to your own country, for the for the Lord will not let me go with you. The Moabite dignitaries left and they came to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. And Balak sent other dignitaries, more numerous and distinguished than the first. They came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, son of Zippor, Please do not refuse to come to me. I will reward you richly, and I will do anything you ask of me. Only come and, and damn this people for me. Balaam replied to Balak's officials, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not do anything, big or little, contrary to the command of the Lord my God. So you too stay here overnight and let me find out what else the Lord may say to me. And that night God came to Balaam and said to him, If these men have come to invite you, you may go with them. But whatever I command you, that you shall do. When he rose... In the morning, Balaam settled his ass and departed with the Moabite dignitaries, but God was incensed, incensed at his going. So an angel of the Lord placed himself in the way as an adversary. So God wanted him to follow his first command, and that was not to go at all. 
but he kept coming back. So um, Balaam could not see that, and you know God said, "Well, then go, but you'll wait. You'll wait to to hear um, from me as to what to say, basically." Um, but here, it it's pretty evident that God did not want him to go in the first place. And he should have listened to God the first time. He was riding on a she ass with his two servants alongside when the ass caught sight of the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. He asked for it from the road and went into the fields, and Balaam beat, beat him to beat her to turn her back onto the road. The angel of the Lord then stationed himself in a lane between the vineyards with a fence on either side. And the asking the angel of the Lord pressed herself against the wall and squeezed Balaam's foot against the wall, so he beat her again. Once more, the angel of the Lord moved forward and stationed himself in a spot so narrow that there was no room to swerve right or left. When the ass now saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, and Balaam was furious and beat her with his step. Then the Lord opened opened her mouth, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have beaten me these three times? Balaam said, said, You have made a mockery of me. If I had a sword with me, I'd kill you. And then she then said to Balaam, Look, I am, I am the one that you've been riding all along until this day. Have I been in the habit of doing thus to you? And he answered, No. Then the Lord uncovered Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, his drawn sword in his hand. Thereupon he bowed right down to the ground. The angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you beaten your ass these three times? It is I who came out as an adversary, for the errand is obnoxious to me. And when, when she saw me, she shied away because of me those three times. If she had not shied away from me, you are the one I should have killed while sparing her. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I erred because I did not know that you were standing in my way. If you still disapprove, I will turn back. But the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Now go with the men, but you must say nothing except what I tell you. So Balaam went on with Balak's dignitaries. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at Ir Moab, it's Ur, Ur Moab, which is on the Arnon border at its farthest point. Balak said to Balaam, when I first sent to invite you, why didn't you come to me? Am I really unable to reward you? But Balaam said to Balak, and now that I have come to you, have I the power to speak freely? I can utter only the word that God puts into my mouth. Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kiriath Huzos. Balak sacrificed oxen and sheep and had them served to Balaam and the dignitaries with him. In the morning, Balak took Balaam up to Bemeth Vale. From there he could see a portion of the people. Chapter 23. Balaam said to Bala, Build me seven altars here and have seven bulls and seven rams ready here for me. Balak did as Balaam directed and Balak and Balaam offered up a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your offerings while I am gone. Perhaps the Lord will grant me a manifestation, and whatever he reveals to me, I will tell you. And he went off alone. God manifested himself to Balaam, who said to him, I have set up the, the seven altars and offered up a bull and a ram on each altar. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak and speak thus. So he returned to him and found him standing beside his offering. And all the Moabite dignitaries with him. He took up the, his theme and said, From Aram has Balak brought me. Moab's king from the hills of the east. Come curse me, Jacob. Come tell Israel's doom. How can I damn whom God has not damned? How doom when the Lord has not doomed? As I see them from the mountaintops, gaze on them from the heights. There are the people that dwell apart, not reckoned among the nations, who can count the dust of Jacob. Number the dust cloud of Israel. May I die the death of, of the upright. May my fate be like theirs. And Balaam said to Balaam, What have you done to me? 
Here I brought you to damn my enemies, and instead you have blessed them. He replied, I can only repeat faithfully what the Lord put in my mouth. And Balak said to him, Come with me to another place from which you can see them. You will see only a portion of them. You will not see all of them, and damn them from me from there. With that, he, he took him to set a open on the summit of Pisgah. He built seven altars and offered a bull, a bull and a ram on each altar. And Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your offering while I seek a manifestation yonder. The Lord manifested himself to Balaam and put a word in his mouth, saying, Return to Balak and speak thus. He, he went to him and found him standing beside his offerings and the Moabite dignitaries with him. Balak asked him, What did the Lord say? And he took up his theme and said, Up, Balak, attend, give, give ear unto me, son of Zippor. God is not man to be capricious or mortal to change his mind. Would he speak? And not act, promise and not fulfill. My message was to bless. When he blesses, I cannot reverse it. No harm is in sight for Jacob, no woe in view for Israel. The Lord their God is with them, and their kings acclaim in their midst. God who freed them from Egypt is for them like the horns of the wild ox. Lo, there is no augury in Jacob, no divining in Israel. Jacob is told at once, yet, yea, Israel, what God has planned. Lo, a people that rises like a lion, leaps up like the king of beasts. Rest not till it has feasted on prey and drunk the blood of the slain. Thereupon Balak said to Balaam, don't curse them and don't bless them. In reply, Balaam said to Balak, but I told you, whatever the Lord says, that I must do. Then, Balaam, then Balak said to Balaam, come now, I will take you to another place. Perhaps God will deem it right that you damn them for me there. Balak took Balaam to the peak of Peor, which overlooks the wasteland. Balaam said to Balak, build me here seven altars, and here seven bulls, and seven rams ready for me here. Balak did as Balaam said, and he offered up a bull and a ram on each altar. Chapter 24. Now Balaam, seeing that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, did not, as on, a, on previous occasions, go in search of omens, but turned his face towards the wilderness. As Balaam looked up and saw Israel and camp, tribe by tribe, the Spirit of God came upon him. Taking up his theme, he said, Word of Balaam, son of, son of the Or, word of the man whose eye is true. Word of him who hears God's speech, who beholds visions from the Almighty. Prostrate, but with eyes unveiled. How fair are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel, like palm groves that stretch out, like gardens beside a river, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the water. Their boughs drip with moisture. Their roots have abundant water. Their king shall rise above Agag. Their kingdom shall be exalted. God, who freed them from Egypt, is for them like the horns of the wild ox. They shall devour enemy nations, crush their bones, and smash their arrows. They crouch, they lie down like a lion, like the king of the beasts who dare rouse them. Blessed are they who bless you, accursed they who curse you. Enraged at Balaam, Balak struck his hands together. I called you, Balak, said to Balaam, to damn my enemies, and, and instead you have blessed them these three times back with you at once to your own place i was going to reward you richly but the lord has denied you the reward balaam replied to balak but i even told the messengers you sent to me though balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold i could not of my own accord do anything good or bad contrary to the lord's command what the lord says that i must say and now as i go back to my people let me inform you of what this people will do to your people in days to come. He took up his theme and said, Word of Balaam, son of Beor, word of the man whose eye is true, word of him who hears God speak, God's speech, uh, who obtains knowledge from the Most High, and beholds visions from the Almighty. Prostate, 
prostrate, but with eyes unveiled. What I behold will not be soon. A star rises from Jacob. A scepter comes forth from Israel. It smashes the brow of Moab. The foundation of all children of Seth, Edom becomes a possession. Yes, Sarah, a possession of its enemies. But Israel is triumphant. A victor is issues from Jacob to wipe out what is left of, of Ur. That's I-R. He saw Amalek and taking up his theme, he said, a leading nation is Amalek, but its fate is to perish forever. He saw the Kenites and taking up his theme, he said, though you abode be secure and your nest be set among among cliffs, yet shall Cain, and it's K-A-I-N, be consumed when Asher takes you captive. He took up his theme and said, Alas, who can survive except God has willed it? Ships come from the quarter of Kittim, and they subject Asher, subject Eber. They too shall perish forever. Then Balaam set out on his journey back home, and Balak also went his way. Chapter 25 While Israel was staying at Shittim, the people profaned themselves by whoring with the Moabite women who invited the people to the sacrifices for their God. The people partook of them and worshipped that God. Thus Israel attached itself to Baal Peor, and the Lord was incensed with Israel. The Lord said to Moses, Take all the ringleaders and have them publicly impaled before the Lord, so that the Lord's wrath may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel's officials, Each of you slay those of his men who attached themselves to Baal Peor. Just then one of the Israelites came and brought a Midianite woman over to his companions in the sight of Moses and of the whole Israelite community who were weeping at the entrance of the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, son of Eliezer, son of Aaron the priest, saw this, he left the assembly and taking a spear in his hand, he followed the Israelite into the chamber and stabbed both of them, the Israelite and the women and, and the woman through the belly. Then the plague against the Israelites was checked, and those who died of the plague numbered 24,000. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Phineas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest has turned back my wrath from the Israelites by displaying among them his passion for me, so that I did not wipe out the Israelite people in my passion. So, so say, therefore, I grant him my pact of friendship. It shall be for him and his descendants after him a pact of priesthood for all time. Then he, be, because he took impassioned action for his God, thus making expiation for the Israelites. The name of the Israelite who, who was killed, the one who was killed with the Midianite woman, was Zimri, son of Salu, chieftain of a Simeonite ancestral house. And the name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Cosby, daughter of Zur. He was the he was the tribal head of an ancestral house in Midian. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Assail the Midianites and defeat them, for they assailed you by the trickery they practiced against you because of the affair of Peor, and because of the affair of their, their kins, kinswoman, Cosby, daughter of the Midianite chieftain, who was killed at the time of the plague on account of Peor. So, Chapter 26, when the plague was over, the Lord said to Moses and to Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priests take the census of the whole Israelite community from the age of 20 years up by their ancestral houses, all Israelites able to bear arms. So Moses and Eleazar, the priests on the steps of Moab at the Jordan near Jericho, gave instructions about them, namely those from 20 years up, as the Lord had commanded Moses. The descendants of the Israelites who came out of the land of Egypt were Reuben, is Israel's firstborn descendants of Reuben, of Enoch, of the clan of the Enochites, of Palu, the clan of the Peluites, of Hezron, the clan of Hezronites, of Carmi, the clan of the Carmites, and those are the clans of the Reubenites. The persons enrolled came to 43,730. Born to Palu, Eliab, the son of Eliab, was 
Nemuel and Dathan and Ab Abraham. These are the same Dathan and Abraham chosen in the assembly who agitated against Moses and Aaron as part of Korah's band when they agitated against the Lord, whereupon the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with Korah. When that band died, when the fire consumed the two hundred and fifty men, and they became an example. The sons of Korah, however, did not die. Descendants of Simeon by their clans of Nemuel, the clan of the Nemuelites of Jamin, the clan of the Jamanites of Jachin, the clan of the Jachinites of Zerah, the clan of the Zerahites, of Saul, the, the clan of the Saulites. Those are the clans of the Simeonites. Persons enrolled. 22,200 descendants of Gad by their clans of Zephon, the clan of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the clan of the Haggites, of Shuni, the clan of the Shunites, of Ozni, the clans of the Oznites, of Eri, the clan, the clan of the Erites, of Ara, the clan of the Eridites, of Areli, the clan of the Aralites. And these are the clans of Gad's descendants, persons enrolled 40,500. Born to Judah, Aaron Onan, Aaron Onan died in the land of Canaan. Descendants of Judah by their clans of Sheila, the clan of the Shilonites of Perez, the clan of the Perizzites of Zerah, the clan of the Zerahites. And descendants of Perez of Hezron, the clan of the Hezronites of Hamul, the clan of the Ham Hamulites. Those are the clans of Judah. Persons enrolled 70, 76. 1,500. Descendants of Issachar by their clans of Tola, the clan of the Tolites, of Puva, the clan of the Punites, of Jashub, the clan of the Jashubites, of Shimton, the clan of the Shim, Shim, I'm sorry, Shimronites. Those are the clans of Issachar, persons enrolled 64,300. Descendants of Zebulun by their clans of Sirad, the clan of the Seredites of Elon, the clan of the Elonites of Jeli, the clan of the Jelilites, and those are the clans of the Zeb, Zeb of the Zebulonites. Uh, persons enrolled were sixty thousand five hundred. The sons of Joseph were Manasseh and Ephraim by their clans. Now descendants of Manasseh of Machir, the clan of the the Machirites, Machir begot Gilead of Gilead, the clan of the Gileadites. These were the descendants of Gilead of, of Jezer, the clan of, I'm, I'm sorry, of Iezer, the clan of the Iezerites, of Helek, the clans of the Helekites, of Azrael, the clan of the Azraelites, of Shechem, the clan of the Shechemites, of Shemida, the clan of the Shemida dates, Shemida dates, and Hepher, the clan of the Hepherites. Now Zelophehad, son of Hepher, had no sons, only daughters. The names of Zelophehad's daughters were Mala, Noah, Agla, Milka, and Terza. Those are the clans of Manasseh, persons enrolled 52,700. These are the descendants of Ephraim by their clans of Shethala, the clan of the Shethala, uh, Shethalahites, of Becker, the clans of the Beckerites, of Tehan, the clan of the Tehanites. These are the descendants of Shuthala, Shuth of Aaron, the clans of the Aaronites. These are the clans of Ephraim's descendants. Persons enrolled 32,500. These are the descendants of Joseph by their clans. The descendants of Benjamin by their clans of Bela, the, the clan of the Belites. Of Ashbel, the clan of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the clan of the Ahiramites, and of the Shephupham, the clan of the Shephamites, of Hupham, the clan of the Hupamites. The son of Bela was Ard, and Naaman of Ard, the clan of the Ardites, of Naaman, the clan of the Namanites. Those are the descendants of Benjamin by their clans, persons enrolled 40. 5,600. These are the descendants of Dan by their clans of Shusham, the clan of the Shushamites, 
I'm sorry, the Shuhamites. And those are the clans of Dan by their clans. All the clans of the Shuhamites, persons enrolled 64,400. Descendants of Asher by their clans uh, of Imna, the clan of the Im, Imna, Imnaites, of Ishbi, the clans of the Ishbite, of Beria, the clans of the Berites, of the descendants of the Beria, of Heber, the clan of the Hebrites, of Mal Malkiel, the clan of the Malkielites. The name of Asher's daughter was Thera. These are the clans of Asher's descendants. Persons enrolled 53,400. The descendants of Naphtali by their clans, of Jaziel, the clan of the Jazelites, of Guni, the clan of the Gunites, of Je Jezer, the clan of the Jezerites, of Shalom, the clan of the Shalomites, those are the clans of the Naphtalites. Clan by clan, persons enrolled 45,400. This is the enrollment of the Israelites, 601,730. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Among these shall the land be apportioned as shares, according to the listed names. With larger groups, increase the share. With smaller groups, reduce the share. Each is to be assigned its share according to its enrollment. This, the land, moreover, is to be apportioned by lot, and the allotment shall be made according to the listings of their ancestral tribes. Each portion shall be assigned by lot, whether for larger or smaller groups. This is the enrollment of the Levites by their clans, of the Ger of Gershon, the clan of the Gershonites, of Kohat, the clan of the Kohathites, of Merari, the clans of the Mer Merarites. These are the clans of Levi, the clans of the Libnites, the clan of the Hebronites, the clan of the Malites, the clan of the Mushites, the clan of the Kor Korahites, Kohath begot Amran. The name of Amran's wife was Jochebed, daughter of Levi, who was born. Who, who was born to Levi in Egypt. She bore Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and their sister Miriam. I'm sorry. She bore to Amram, Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. To Aaron were born Nadab and Abihu. Eleazar and Ithamar, Nadab and Abihu died when they offered alien fire before the Lord. So they were struck dead, and, and that was the two elder sons of Aaron. Their enrollment of 23,000 compared, I'm um, sorry, comprised all males from a month up. They were not part of the regular enrollment of the Israelites since no share was assigned to them among the Israelites. These are the persons enrolled by Moses and Eliezer, the priests, who registered the Israelites on the steps of Moab at the Jordan near Jericho. Among these, there was not one of those enrolled by Moses and Aaron, the priests, when they recorded the Israelites in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, they shall die in the wilderness. Not one of them survived except Caleb. Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and, and Joshua, son of Nun. Chapter 27, the daughters of Zelophehad, of a Manassite family, son of, of Heifer, um, son of Gilead, son of Mechur, son of Man Manasseh, son of Joseph, came forward. The names of the daughters were Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milka, and Tirzah. They stood before Moses. Eliezer, the priest, the chieftains, and the whole assembly at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and they said, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not one of the faction, chorus faction, which banded together against the Lord, but died for his own sin, and he has left no sons. Let not our father's name be lost to his clan, just because he had, he had no sons. Give us a holding among our father's kinsmen. Moses brought their case before the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, The plea of Zelophehad's daughters is just. You should give them a hereditary holding among their father's kinsmen, transfer their father's share to them. Further, speak to the Israelite people as follows If a man dies without leaving a son, you shall transfer his property to his daughter. 
if he has no daughter, you shall assign his property to his brothers. If he has no brothers, you shall assign his property to his father's brothers. If his father had no brothers, you shall assign his property to his nearest relative in his own clan, and he shall inherit it. This shall be the law of procedure for the Israelites in, in accordance with the Lord's command to Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Ascend these heights of Abram and be the land that I have given to the Israelite people. When you have seen it, you too shall be gathered to your kin, just as your brother Aaron was. For in the wilderness was then, when the community was contentious, you disobeyed, you disobeyed. I had my command to uphold my sanctity in their sight by means of the water. Those are the waters at Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, source of breath of all flesh, appoint someone over the community who shall go out before them and come in before them, and who shall take them out and bring them in, and so that the Lord's community may not be like sheep, that they have no shepherd. And the Lord answered Moses, Single out Joshua, son of Nun, an inspired man, and lay your hand upon him. Have him stand before Eliezer, the priest, and before the whole community, and commission him in their sight. Invest him with some of your authority, so that the whole Israelite community may obey. But he shall present himself to Eliezer, the priest, who shall on his behalf seek the decision of the Urim. For the Lord, but such instruction they shall go out, and by such instruction they shall come in, he and all the Israelites, the whole community. Moses did as the Lord commanded, he took Joshua and had him stand before Eliezer, the priest, and before the whole community. He laid his hands upon him and commissioned him as the Lord had spoken through. Moses. And that's the end of our reading for this week. Next week we will conclude the book of Numbers. So we're going to close this segment in prayer and then go into the altar call. And we're going to move into the altar call. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ, through Yeshua HaMashiach. The Lord took all of the sins of the world when he himself laid down his life on that very cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could be reconciled to the Father. He did this willingly to do the will of the Father so that we could all be redeemed. And salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. And the consequences of sin is death. There is a spiritual death separ separating, um, separating from God. And we certainly don't want to be separated from our Creator. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned against and, and come short of the glory of God. I'm getting tongue tied here. Um, so, um, Romans chapter 5, verse 8, also, this is, the, this is the answer to that. God commanded His love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. Do you want to be saved and born again if you have not already done so? This is an opportunity to do that. All you really need to do is call in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, Yeshua is his Hebrew name, and it means salvation. All you need to do is call on the name of Yeshua, and you shall be saved. Eternity is forever, though. Um, so make your choice. Choose wisely. Are you going to follow the ways of the world, or are you going to um, follow Yeshua as your Lord, as your King? But understand he's coming again to rule and reign as king of kings and lord of lords. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess he is the lord. He is king. 
and he died, he bled and died for you, me, for everyone, for everyone that ever would walk on the face of this earth. Take away the sins of the world. He was the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Now, looking back to, um, to what we had read in the Old Testament of the animal sacrifices, they only covered sin, but there was a lot through the years, um, a lot of innocent animals being put to death for the sins of the people. But there, that was the only way they could do it until Yeshua came. Yeshua's sacrifice of his own life was lasting forever, um, once and for all. And he took the sins of the world away. So all you need to do is confess your sins to him, ask for forgiveness, turn from sin, and accept the Lord as your Savior. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you have never accept, accepted Yeshua, Jesus, into your into your life, if you've never given your life to the Lord, you can do this now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I know that Savior is Jesus, Yeshua, who died on the cross, was buried, rose again, sitting at the right hand of the Father, coming again to rule and reign. Yeshua, I thank you for everything that you've done. I'm coming to confess my sins to you, to ask for forgiveness. And I accept the gift of salvation and eternal life that you offer. In fact, today I declare you as Lord and Savior of my life. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. And I believe through you and you alone that I am saved, I am healed, delivered, born again, set free of sin and the consequences of sin. And I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, I am healed and now healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Yeshua's precious, precious name, amen. If you have said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I'm going to encourage you to get a copy, a hard copy of the Bible. Go to Bible Hub, Bible Gateway. You can sample the different samples in the one. Uh, your first purchase of a Bible, I would say the one that you are most comfortable with reading. Get involved in Bible studies um, in your local congregation. You can certainly take advantage of ours uh, and begin to read the Bible yourself. You can never get enough of the Bible. It is our instruction manual from God himself. And it is also, in reading it, we can see the heart of the Father and what he loves and what he does not love. So we can begin that relationship with him. And yes, build your relationship with, with God the Father. He is now your heavenly Father. He has put his name on you, sealed you with his Holy Spirit. And he loves to bless his children. He also loves to hear directly from you as his child. You are part of a big family of God, part of the kingdom of God. Now, if you're born again and saved. So that is all I'm going to say about that. And we're going to bring, bring the Bible study to a close this week with the ironic blessing or the priestly blessing. We, you can find this in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. This is when the Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. Now, Aaron, at the time that this, this occurred, was the high priest. The Kohen Gadol and his sons were, were also serving as, as priests. So the Lord wanted to put his name on Israelite and bless them, and he gave specific words on which to be spoken of over the congregation. So I'm going to say it first in Hebrew, and then I'm going to say it in English. In Hebrew, it goes like this Eva Rekata, Adonai, the Ish Mareka. Yaea, Adonai, Panavalaka. Vikunaka, Isa Adonai Panavalaka, 
shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shavuot Tov, everyone. Have a good rest of your week. Also, um, don't forget there's the, the main Bible study of the NASB and also the Passion Translation. So those that... Um, So that will be all, and God bless each and every one of you. Again, Shavuot Tov. Have a good rest of your week.